96.7 FM WORX. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. AJ Bramer here in the studio on Telegraph Hill. It is 9.04 AM and it's time once again for Cop Talk brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We do Cop Talk the last Tuesday of each month. Joining me on the program as always is Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and Madison City Police Chief Dan Thurston. Chief Sheriff, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Good morning. And also joining us for the program this month, we have Josh Taylor, who is the Hanover Town Marshal. So, Thanks Josh, thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> yeah, we definitely appreciate uh, the Sheriff and the Chief for coming on the program. A good chance to talk about what's going on in their departments. And, you know, we... Sometimes I, we don't necessarily forget that Hanover has the police force out there. We definitely appreciate what they do for the community. So this is a good opportunity to uh, talk with Josh about what you guys got going on. <laughs> well, I appreciate you having me here this morning and inviting me over. The sheriff and Chief Thurston have both contacted me about coming out here in the past, but this is yeah. the first time where it's worked out with scheduling for me to come out and speak with you guys. Yeah, we've been trying to get you over here for a while. We're really excited to have you. So, just to, but first off, uh, checking in with the uh, the other departments, uh, Chief, uh, is there anything new going on with the city police? Well, I think um, to I guess first kind of recap 2016. Um, we think you know we had a good year and um, good successful event season. Um, we're excited about having Philip Wimpy on board as our new hiree in 2016, and he's completing our our first ever official FTO program, if you will, and um, that that should be completing soon and getting him out on the road. So, um, 2016 has been a good year. If if you can have such a thing in in law enforcement, sure. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, and moving forward into 2017, some things we're looking forward to is, is hopefully getting uh, uh, our new police station there at uh, fifth and west and I, I know that's uh and i don't think even we as officers understand all the red tape and formalities when a municipality acquires a property so getting through that and and then getting through the renovation so we can get in there we're uh, we're really looking forward to that that's excellent and uh sheriff what's new with the uh, sheriff's department yeah review in 2016 it has been a uh, has been a good year uh still trying to figure out where it all went to it goes by <laughs> it goes by so fast but uh We've uh, continued to move forward at the Sheriff's Department. I'm really excited about the uh, progress we made, not only over last year, but over the uh, the last six years. Uh, really pleased with the uh, with the efforts of, of the officers and uh, in, in where we are now at the uh, at the Sheriff's Department. Uh, you know, we continue to grow. Our County Council uh, uh, has allowed uh, us to hire an additional deputy for 2017. Uh, you know, we're in that process now and uh, should have that deputy up and running, you know, by mid-January. That's certainly going to help. Uh, you think, well, it's just one, but uh, one when you only have 15 is a... Uh, is a significant increase for us so uh, we're looking forward to getting that new deputy uh, out on the road and uh, and reconfigure some things with uh, within the ranking officers of the department and so really pleased and excited about uh, about you know where we're at and uh, in in the direction we're heading in so um, you can never stand still you got to continue to grow and progress and uh, and keep the department moving forward and I know the chief does that at uh, at Madison and uh, Chief Taylor does is doing that at, at Hanover and, and we're continuing to do it to Sheriff's Department as well uh, it's been a very busy year narcotic wise uh, the the arrests and the narcotic investigations of uh, they probably hit an all-time record high um, you know that's uh, negative in one aspect obviously uh, it indicates that we do have that issue here like every other community but but on the other hand it's telling us that uh, our guys are out there uh, really busting their tail and, and getting the job done and uh, and putting people where they need to be because we do know for a fact our statistics tell us as our as our drug arrests go up our other crimes uh, property crimes especially go down so we'll continue that battle in in 2017 and uh, continue to evolve and, uh, and 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 fight the good fight excellent and chief taylor as we uh, invite you onto the program as well uh, quite a bit new for you as you uh, just recently took it's been three months now that you've been the marshal in Hanover? Yes, that's correct. And so uh, tell us a little bit about what's been going on with your department. Uh, with the transition change, we're trying to get some more uh, community involvement, speaking with the public, trying to get information and establish a rapport with the town itself and also the surrounding areas, trying to get them to engage us because, as the sheriff had pointed out, with the drug uh, problems or the issues that we have, a lot of the information, uh, we may suspect it, but we don't have anything to corroborate it or allow us to uh, further our investigations with that so just trying to build a rapport with the public to get them to feel comfortable to speak with law enforcement to share information or point out things because uh, in the past there was individuals I felt it might have been closed off where somebody didn't feel like they could approach the police department to go and speak with us and we've been trying to target that and adjust that uh, perception uh, before anybody could have talked to us and shared their information 
information. They just chose not to. Uh, with us, we're trying to change that perception to the public. That's excellent. And this is a we talk about it all the time with our, with uh, you guys coming on this program. That's something we talk about quite a bit. Is you know the public reaching out to the law enforcement officers. Well, and as we've said, you know, several times. Um, you know your neighborhood better than anybody else or, or your community and um, so if something seems like it's not right chances are it's probably not right and and to trust their gut and, and to call us and, and let, allow us to come out and investigate worst case scenario is we don't find what we think we're going to find and, and everybody's uh, better for it but it, it could be something that's worth looking into and, and a problem that uh, needs to be resolved and, and uh, that's what we're here for please call us please uh, let us look into those types of things you know, I think it's important to note here this morning that uh, that uh, you know we do have the uh, three leaders of our local law enforcement here, and and I want that to uh, send a message out to to our community that we are do work on a united front. Uh, we we do work hand in hand. Uh, we had a, a serious incident happen out in the town of Deputy yesterday, for example. Yes. Um, we had Madison Police and Hanover Police out there to assist us. So you know it's important you know for the public to know that we do we do work hand in hand. Uh, those boundaries of the city limits, or those boundaries of the town of Hanover, or even the boundaries of the county. Do not prohibit us or stop us from crossing those boundaries and going out and, and helping uh, helping our brothers and sisters in law enforcement and our and our fellow community members. So, I'm really pleased that uh, uh, that uh, Chief Taylor is here with us today. And he's he's doing an outstanding job. He's, he's started off very well out there, and uh, you know we do speak. Uh, um, probably several times a week you know to discuss issues and uh, to see what we can do to help each other out so i think it's just important to for, the, for the public to know that we are you know we are united and we are working together and, and uh, yeah you see that all the time i think when the press releases come out how there may be an incident somewhere in the county but it's never a surprise to see somebody from the madison police assisting somebody from the hanover police assisting so and i know having having those resources nearby is definitely reassuring <laughs> Yes, it is. Uh, like for the agency my size, uh, we don't necessarily have backup, so we rely on the county. But the same thing, where the county deputies, they may be 15 miles away, uh, whereas I may be closer, or one of my officers may be closer. So it just makes a little bit of a sense for us to go and help out uh, each other for that, because in a time of need, uh, the public needs an officer there. They don't care if they're wearing brown, green, blue. Uh, they just want an officer there to help them at that moment in time, and that's the service we're trying to provide. I think that's a line that we've used on the show before before whether it's brown or blue they're working for you Absolutely. <laughs> that's right that is jefferson county sheriff john wallace madison police chief dan thurston and hanover town marshal josh taylor joining us once again for cop talk brought to you by anderson sales and services we do cop talk the last tuesday of each month we'll be back again with the chief the marshal and the sheriff after this on works 96.7 You can catch us online anytime at WORXradio.com or on your smartphone or tablet. Go to the TuneIn Radio app in the App Store. Once you download the TuneIn Radio app, type in WORX in the search engine. It'll bring us up, and you can listen all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, online, it's WORXradio.com. 96.7 FM WORX. Good morning and thank you for tuning back in to Cop Talk brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We do Cop Talk the last Tuesday of each month and hard to believe that it is the final Cop Talk of 2016. It is already upon us as we wrap up this year. We look into the new year. Uh, we're joined once again by Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston and Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and joining us on the program. We've been trying to get him on for a couple months and we're really happy to have Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor on the program with us as well. Before the break, uh, Sheriff, we were talking about we were talking about how these three law enforcement entities they may be three different names but we like to see them the times where they're able to work together you know they're always out there you know, like you said looking out for each other and we had an example of that yesterday as you mentioned a little bit ago with an incident out in deputy we did we had a, a serious incident out in, in uh, deputy indiana yesterday afternoon it was a domestic uh, welfare check uh, that uh, that turned sour on us as the deputy went to the residence to uh, to check on a, a female who lived there. Um, she was prohibited or prevented from coming out of the residence by uh, the male subject that lived there with her. Uh, basically slammed the door on the, on the deputy and created a, a standoff for about six hours. Uh, fortunately, we were able to end that standoff without anybody getting hurt about six hours later. And we arrested uh, Mark E. Tevinot. 
uh, 57 from the deputy area. Uh, he's on preliminary charges of uh, criminal confinement and uh, domestic battery at this point, which are level six felonies. However, we anticipate additional charges to be filed as well. But going back to what you said, yeah, it's a perfect case uh, example of uh, the state police, uh, Hanover police, Madison police. Uh, I think we even had a Indiana excise officer out there to assist us as well. So when a call for help comes out, too, we certainly uh, we certainly all respond. But uh, the uh, domestic calls are are really some of the most serious, the most dangerous calls that we go on. And uh, you know, fortunately, uh, you know, this one turned out well for us. But uh, you know, without the presence of, of the law enforcement there, without the help that uh, that we sought out and came, you know, it could have been a different story. So we are very appreciative of, of all the help we received yesterday. Chief, I know this was a county incident, but do you have anything to add to that? Well, I, I was just impressed. I, I was there and was impressed with the number of people that turned out uh, from a law enforcement side, number of troopers that were there, and, and as the sheriff has mentioned, so many agencies just willing to, to realize here's an incident that, that maybe I can be of assistance. So um, there was definitely strength in numbers on the law enforcement side, and, and I really think because of that, was part of the reason that uh, it ended so peacefully and although six hours is a long time relatively quickly i mean we were prepared to be there maybe through the night um we weren't sure how it was going to end but uh based on the fact that i think uh mr tevinot realized um we weren't going to leave and we had the number of officers that we had that uh, it ended peacefully and, and rather quickly and chief taylor that's another one that you know you get and you were able to send your guys out there as well yes i responded also uh at that point in time when they requested assistance there at the residence um with these type of incidents as they pointed out uh, they're so dynamic you don't know what's going to happen you don't know if it's going to spill out or if it's going to be contained uh, with all of the agencies that did respond and setting up a perimeter assisted with keeping it contained in one localized area instead of having a situation that was rapidly evolving throughout the county and that's like we said that's we want to see it's good to know that you got plenty of guys out there in our community looking out for us and I think you know, that's one thing that's <laughs> changed indefinitely for the better, at least in my 24 years of law enforcement. Um, you know, it used to be you worked your jurisdiction, and if it was somebody else's problem, then maybe they would call you for help, and then you would go. But I, I think now we're more of the in the thought of I can help, and if I get there and they don't need me, they, I can always come back. So I, I think that's definitely a, an improvement in, in our thought process and our willingness to help uh, with amongst our agencies here. That's definitely what we like to see. And so at now, kind of transitioning out of that, we were talking during the break about how uh, we've been pretty lucky with the winter weather we've had so far, nothing too serious. And I know uh, the sheriff was talking about how he'll be traveling to do some even worse weather here soon uh, as he travels north for a little bit yeah i like to take that annual fishing trip ice fishing and people often wonder why you know you go north in the winter i just i just kind of do things backwards <laughs> north in the winter and south in the summer so <laughs> hey i don't find it as busy that way you know so no yeah that's, as somebody that's taking a uh, a spring break trip to north dakota before i i'm right there, there you with go you. yeah a lot of people do that right <laughs> but yes so we're not quite getting as serious as what they're getting up there but no, you know hammered we have been lucky down here with the uh the relatively mild winter we've had so far but there's never a guarantee that that's going to stick around here in indiana yeah it's uh, it's certainly coming i know the uh, you know we had we have a little lull on the storm so to speak right now with these warmer days but uh, i think next week they're projecting uh, highs back in the uh, 20s which uh, you know obviously is going to be a significant drop which is a good time to remind everyone of our of our warming centers that we do have uh, available for the community uh, that's through the salvation army if, uh, if you find yourself in need of a warm place to stay overnight, uh, uh, make sure you're at the Salvation Army by 4 o'clock, and uh, they'll transport you to the warming centers, which vary throughout the community, different churches and, and organizations. If you uh, find yourself still in need of that and it's after 4, you can contact the uh, Sheriff's Department or the uh, Madison Police Department on the on the landlines. That's 812-265-2648 or 812-265-3347, and uh, an officer will get you a ride to wherever that warming shelter is that night. So um, please don't hesitate to call or utilize that those facilities um, you know because we certainly don't want anybody to be out in the elements and uh, and fall victim type of thermia that's, gee, that's you know just a service you guys are providing just to look out for people absolutely yeah um, you know um, it would be unfortunate to be in that situation um, but unfortunately there are some people in our uh, community that that do have issues with um, heat or, or staying warm in the uh, cold winter months and we would 
uh, be honored, if you would, uh, to help them in, in any way we possibly could. Uh, it's, you know, it's one of those things that I think sometimes people, when they find themselves in that situation, it's uh, sometimes it might be a pride thing. You know, they're a little worried about having to ask for help, but you should never be ever be afraid when there's so many people out there that care about you. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there would be no reason to be embarrassed. Uh, the fact is, w- regardless of why you're in your si- in that situation, you are. So let's get you the help and the services that that you need. But in addition to, you know, wanting people to be safe on finding shelter, you know, we do want people also to be be safe on the roadways as well. Don't want anybody to take too many chances out there on the on the highways. <coughs> Speaking of being safe on the roadways, one of the things that I know in the community here that I've observed since I've been back in the area as an officer since 2014, a lot of times when the officers are responding lights and sirens to calls, uh, the public itself or the other vehicles on the roadway don't necessarily... um, notice or pay attention to the law enforcement vehicles even with ems i've been following a couple ambulances to calls over the past couple of years and i've noticed that vehicles just do not uh notice pay attention the radio may be too loud they may be distracted by other devices in their vehicle and it creates a potential hazard for everybody law enforcement ems the fire departments responding plus just the general public that's on the roadway Um, in these times i just request that uh, everybody pay attention and look for emergency responders yield the right of way make room Uh, yesterday responding to the call i know a couple people had made comments about individuals not yielding right away to uh, the law enforcement responding to the call and deputy uh, with that so that's just a potential hazard we as law enforcement or first responders want to get there safely because we can't help anybody uh, if we don't make it there safely ourselves. but also with the vehicles on the roadway if they're not paying attention they may pull out and everybody just needs to open up their eyes open up their ears and see what's going on around them instead of just being in their own little bubble I think that's another thing that we run into with our part of the state in particular we have a very unique geography here And so with a lot of narrow roadways at times and different hills and valleys that you'll drive through, that's another thing that just being aware of your surroundings and being aware of what's coming up on you can help keep everybody safe. Yeah, And the proper thing to do is just, you know, slow down, stop, pull to the right. You know, that's uh, that's what we expect you to do or that's what we're anticipating that you're going to do. So encourage everybody to, uh, you know, to hear to that. uh, You know, like I said, we want to uh, we want to get by you safely without jeopardizing you or anybody else. As the chief said, we can't do anybody good if we don't get there. So uh, just remember that. You know, I know sometimes you panic. Just uh, just slow down or stop and pull to the right, and we'll get around you safely. That's Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace, Madison City Police Chief Dan Thurston, and Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor joining us for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We'll be back to wrap things up with the sheriff, the chief, and the marshal after this on Works 96.7. Works 96.7 WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning back in to Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We do Cop Talk the last Tuesday of each month. It's brought to you by Anderson's, and joining me on the program, Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston, Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace, and we're happy to have Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor with us for the first time today. And Sheriff Chief and Marshal, as we look into the end of the year, of course, we have one last uh, one last celebration coming up, as you know, we had... So- want to see people have a good time celebrate new year's eve but we want them to do it safely absolutely it's a it's a big weekend to celebrate and um to to conclude 2016 and look forward to what opportunities may exist for not only law enforcement but everyone for 2017 we want people to have a great time celebrate um but just make sure um you have a safe ride home um because we we all know uh, the dangers of of driving uh, while under the influence, both um, j- not just from an arrest standpoint, but from a public safety standpoint, that you're risking the safety of yourself plus everybody else. So, um, yes, please celebrate. Please have a great time, but then um, also have a, uh, a safe way to get to where you need to go to get home. Yeah, absolutely. New Year's Eves have been uh, uneventful for us really the last several years, and we certainly want to keep it that way. So uh, I had uh, somebody wish me a happy, quiet New Year's Eve the other day, and I thought that was a, that would be very appropriate. But, uh, yeah, just uh, like I said, think before you drink and designate that driver, and uh, we'll get everybody out and have a good time and, and get them back home safe. Also, wrapping up the year, I'd like to uh, thank Anderson's uh, Sales and Service for uh, sponsoring and uh, allowing us to uh, come on to the radio talk show and, and speak to the uh, citizens directly. I think that's a, a benefit to the uh, to the public. And uh, I'd like to thank Andersons for their for their.
their sponsorship and their continued support. They not only sponsor us uh, sit here on the radio, but uh, throughout the year for various needs in law enforcement as well. So we're we're very appreciative of Anderson's. A lot like what uh, Chief Taylor was saying earlier about, you know, it's, I know it's an initiative for you to do more community involvement. So this is an opportunity. It's a forum for you to talk to people. So we definitely, like like the ch- sheriff said, we appreciate that opportunity. Yes. Yeah, so with this, we're able to reach uh, multiple people, whether they're at work in their vehicle or at home, just listening to the radio station uh, with that. And it's an avenue to get inside uh, to somebody uh, residents are in their ears just to talk to them instead of walking around knocking on every door trying to catch them or go into their business when they think hey these guys are just out PRing you're taking time as a listener to be there because you know when we're going to be on the radio speaking with us or with you and you're able to tune in to listen to see what we have to say for the month so as we close out 2016 and we look towards 2017 uh Chief Taylor, I know you talked about this a little bit ago. Just you know, it's still part of your transition going forward. But uh, what are what are some goals for the department, the Hanover Police Department, in 2017? In 2017, we're hoping to add a few additional reserve officers to our department to augment our staff, uh, allow us uh, extra coverage, patrol, give those individuals an opportunity. A lot of times, a reserve is a person who wants to get into law enforcement. Um, and they're just trying to get their foot in the door, whether it's with our agency or surrounding agency, just to get the training uh, to move on and better themselves. But also there's individuals who want to give back to their community. It may be their hometown, maybe their actual town that they're moving into and they wanna better it for themselves by donating their time. Uh, with that, my paid officers, we're hoping to get them additional training um, that helps develop themselves, personal development, to give an area or an avenue of something they're interested in on the enforcement side to help better serve the Jefferson County community here. Excellent. Uh, Chief Thurston, same question. What are some goals for the Madison Police in 2017? Well, it's kind of ironic that Chief Taylor mentioned manpower. Um, we're looking at possibly uh, two retirees in in 2017 Um, there's been some discussion of that so um, one thing that I always point out you know in law enforcement when when we make a new hiree it's it's not your typical typical job where they get two weeks to a month of some training on the job training and then they're ready to go it's it's usually if if they need to attend the academy and they're not already a an academy basic class graduate it's roughly a year before that officer is is out on his own and ready to go so um manpower issues um concern me a little bit and we're also not a uh, law enforcement in general is not an organization where you can work short i mean you have to have so many officers out there you know for it to be safe for the officer the agency itself but also to to serve the public so um we're we're considering manpower issues as we look at 2017 and then um he (laughs) chief taylor stole my other one was training we've Mm -hmm. talked about our uh internal training uh how we want to handle that maybe um changing it a little bit but then also looking at some outside training opportunities for our officers to um just so that they're the best that they can be because uh, I, I'm very proud of the agency that we have and I'm, I'm proud of their um, commitment to, to what they do and I know they want to be better and we want to give them every opportunity to, to accomplish that. That's excellent. And Sheriff, same question for you. Yeah, same along those lines. Uh, you know, we want to, uh, you know, we have been proactive over the last several years. We want to continue to be even more so. Uh, you know, a lot of times law enforcement is a reactive uh, occupation, but uh, we have had some proactive uh, approaches uh, over the last several years and and i want to increase upon them uh, such as the uh, saturation patrol which we've done uh, very successfully over the last several years with the hanover and, and the madison police so i look forward to more of the, more of those sessions um, you know those do get a lot of narcotics uh, dangerous drivers off the streets so i think that's something that we can certainly uh, build upon and, and do more of in, in 2017 and uh, make our community that much more safer as we wrap up the program is there anything else you guys would like to add yeah i think it's important to point out the uh, the packers win sunday they're uh, they're going to be the uh, uh, division champs so uh coming from behind it's uh, it's going to be an exciting day so go pack um as a <laughs> i'm not real sure how to follow up well, that. His team's, his team's out of it, yeah I think <laughs> well my raiders are still in there yeah 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 um opposed, the opposite of what the sheriff does as far as going 
north in the winter i was fortunate enough to get a week with my family where it was very nice and very warm so i would personally like to take credit for bringing some of that warm weather back this past <laughs> sunday and monday for the 60s and 70s and then also uh for everybody listening i'd just like to wish them a happy new year and have a, a great 2017 i'm sure a lot of people appreciate the warm weather <laughs> that I, did cheap- my, I did my best but that's i could only get two days in my suitcase right. that's all i had sure uh, chief taylor before we go anything else you'd like to add just that everybody in the community here uh, make good sound decisions this weekend for the holiday season and then also um, just enjoy 2017 be responsible and uh, and uh, town marshal hanover town marshal josh taylor once again big appreciation for you uh, coming on the show today thank you guys for allowing me to come we hope to see you again soon <laughs> that's the hanover town marshal josh taylor madison police chief dan thurston and jefferson county sheriff john wallace joining us once again for cop talk brought to you by anderson sales and services we want to thank the three of them for coming on our program all throughout the year in 2016 and we look forward to seeing them again in 2017 a big thanks to anderson's for sponsoring the program and a big thanks to the listeners out there for tuning into it that will do it for cop talk in 2016 we will see you again in the month of january until then stay tuned to the hits of the 80s 90s and now on works 96.7 WORX. i'm aj brammer thanks for tuning in